Nine Brides in Granny Height, Chapter 8, Part 1, Granny Buys a Truck. Mindful that the quilters would be at her house again in a day or two, Granny Height checked her supplies and found she was out of tea and baking sodas. Growing more vexed with every single twinge of her knee joints, she hobbled to the store. But Maddie, you bought those things last week, Amos knew his customers wants to the ounce. Aretha Annabelle sent her Carmel to me and borrowed all I had. Those Annabelles, Amos shook his old head, always after something for nothing, getting worse. He bent over the serratus bin, turning his face to keep his beard out. Granny softened. Poor Aretha, can't do else with her man tuckle each loafing all the time and 14 bodies to clothe and mouths to feed. Amos snorted. Most of Tuck's boys are big enough to earn their own shirts and vittles. And that oldest girl, Silver Moon, is real pretty. She could start most any young feller laying up rocks for a hearth. The Annabelle's pa and ma have lost their get up and gimp. That's what it is. He banged down the lid of the tea box. It was the last two coming as twins that wore down Aretha, defended Granny. As a girl, she could bake and cook real nice. And Tuckaleach was that strong and straight plowing, nobody could hardly beat him. Clucked Amos. Here comes Tuck now. He won't buy. He'll wheedle. You watch. Craftily bland Tuck Leach Annabelle, who filled overalls till the rivets squeaked, clumped in over the worn threshold and spoke as howdy. He made known that he craved a loan of two or three bass hooks. Amos Beard pushed out as if starched. Why don't you buy your tackle, Tuck? Tuck viewed him with hurt eyes. If I catch a couple, we'll go snucks. What's fairer than that? Except in the hooks, he loitered hopefully. Happens you got a pinch of snuff to spare, Amos? Amos flung him the can. Yes, and I have plows too for those willing to use them. There's a letter for you, Tuck. For me? From out west somewhere, from Cass Peeler. Said so on the envelope. Amos passed it through the mail window. Tuckleach turned the envelope over in his big hands, trying to guess its contents. I'll get Corey Beckett to read it to me. He shoved it into his bib. Granny spoke. Did you enjoy your tea this morning, Tuckaleach? Hit was fair, but I'd choose coffee. I don't know where Aretha gets the stuff we've had lately. She got it from me, Tuck Annabel. I drank milk. Tuck looked as if he approved of milk for old people. Granny Height left the two men and returned to her home. Her cottage was at the point where the foot log crossed the cat track run and met the trail up Peckerwood, the handiest spot in the hollow or on the big mountain for anyone who needed neighborly help, and such help was always freely given. But her patience was being stretched to snapping by the animals. In her creed, people should earn things or mighty nigh wear themselves out trying before turning into askers and leaners. This day, she found three callers on her doorstep. Asa and Pelion Annabelle, 11, and Ararat, 15, had been sent down the mountain by their mother for some bedding. Kin had arrived at the Annabelle cabin for a visit, setting up a crisis. Also, Ma Annabelle could use Granny's deep skillet and big knife. Last time I had to ask for those things back, and the knife was nicked. One of Tuck's big boys, she felt, might have put it in better shape. You can load up with kivers in the pan, but the knife set by Beckett's getting a new edge. The next time she saw Tuck Leach was at the store again. Tuck was waving his letter and was in the middle of a speech. You all recollect Cass Peeler? Well, them Peelers are out west now getting free groceries. Granny didn't often take part in store porch gab fests. Men folks are the natural bench warmers and jaw waggers. But this was something she had to hear about. She stopped on the rough porch steps. What's that, Huck Hannibal? He says it's easy. First they drew county aid being down to their last pound of chitlins. Then their girl Sweetie Belle had a baby and free food and red as long as no papa showed his nose. Stated Grand Sir Beckett, taint square. Taint the Lord's intention nor the Constitution's. Root and rustle is the law of life. Tuck grinned. 
That's plum old fashioned. Cass says there's talk out west that in a few years, citizens over 65 will get cash money every month. State pension. Granny, who'd come to pay a pail of plum butter on her store bill, went on in. It was quite a spell since she'd seen 65, and no pension was in sight for her. But as long as a body had a hoe, a cow, some hens, and some fruit trees, what matter? She thought of the tasty things her soil furnished and was thankful. Homeward bound, she stopped at Bide Beckett Smithy and Tan Yard for her knife and a pair of shoes he'd mended. Thick-chested Bide was on his back, working wrathfully under a strange contraption. It was a truck, or the rusty remains of one, the first gasoline-powered vehicle ever seen in the hollow. He paid $10 for it and had driven it from Marionboro with adventures that were worth a ballad. He stuck his grizzled head out, knocked it on a sharp edge, and grunted, Ouch! I figured on making a fine trip in this thing to Mammoth Caves. I always have hoped to see them caves, but this old truck will take a heap of winching to climb out of the holler. The more fool you, retorted Granny, for fetching thunder spitting rubbish in here in the first place. Saddlebags and wagons and Amos Toller's buggy were good enough for anybody where the only road was down the bed of the creek. She added, I've come for my shoes and the knife that was lent to the animals. Those animals. Bide like Amos had little use for the lot. Lazy. They'll borrow you out of socks and bonnet. They have their good pints, same as most. Granny would have stuck up for a roost robin fox if everybody else was taking sticks to it. There isn't a soul who would do more for a sick neighbor than Aretha Annabelle, and her oldest girl, Silver Moon, is growing to be just like her. The way Silver Moon slaves over your niece, Cory, rubbin' and rubbin', and tuck her paw would be a right able man if he'd work. If he'd work. You know what their house is. Chimney caved in, roof leaky, not half enough beds. He gave her the knife and shoes and crawled back under his rust pile, raking his grease-streaked head again. Ouch! I get so dang mad at this truck machine for seven dollars cash I'd sell it quicker than a hound could lick a plate. Bide! A glimmer came to Granny. I'll buy this heap of nonsense. You? You chuff this thing straight over to Toller's store. Make it heave and roar and paint a sign on it. Ho for the West! Granny, are you crazy? Where I aim to get this to Mammoth Caves. You aren't going even that far. You've sold the truck. I'll pay you the seven dollars as soon as I can raise it. The glim in her mind was growing. She hinted some of it to Bide. Understand? Sort of. Bide eyed her with awe and doubt. Granny Height, if you aren't the beatenest, though I don't know if it'll work, it's worth a try. Granny was mighty cheerful of a sudden. Now, Bide, you do as I say.